Hello and welcome back to Genesis Designs and Model Craft and welcome to part one of Brick Building where I will be building this latest Ooh, that was a nasty sound wasn't it? This latest 148th Blackburn Buccaneer in Royal Air Force guys Obviously the FX kit Mighty mighty box art as usual uh, The aircraft I will be modelling during this build is this one. I am going to stick with the uh, kit supplied decals and I'm going to build XW527 of number 12 squadron Royal Air Force Lossy Mouth in Scotland. Wrap around camo, one of the best schemes ever. <laughs> I mean, really. Um, yeah, that's the scheme that will be done with appropriate weathering, etc. Using, as I say, the kit supplied decal sheet. I don't have any issue with airfix decals, they do tend to be really rather good and I am more than happy on this occasion to go ahead and use them. Now, I have of course purchased some accessories for this for this build. Uh, by the power of Hanant's, went online, had a look what was available. Having done the inbox review, and a bit of an idea of what I might want to go for. So I picked up the Edward Edge and this is a sort of, the general, medium medium sort of set it's not basic but it's not the super set either you've we've got instrument panel cockpit stuff there and then various sort of airframe details as well this focuses mostly on um the air brakes pretty much uh quite a lot of stuff for the air brakes a little bit of stuff for the bombo which i'm not going to need and a little bit of stuff for the nose wheel bay and the nose wheel bay is terrifyingly basic actually in the kit as it comes. There's your cockpit stuff. And this is set 491316. I think this was of the order of £25 from Hannah's memory serves. Also, brass and wheels. Controversially, I claimed that the Kit wheels were a bit rubbish, which they are. Um, since the descent on the comments section of the um, inbox, I've looked at a lot of pictures, and no pictures show any evidence of any creases, unsurprisingly. But even if they didn't have creases, they are relatively basic, and brass and wheels, personally, I think are always, pretty much always excellent. Pretty much always worth the money. A genuine upgrade in most cases. Certainly are in this case. Um, I don't remember the price. Six-ish pounds, something like that. They're not very expensive, really. You do get a little sheet of pre-cut masks, should you wish to use them as well. So that's the wheels sorted. Then I've got the pretty much obligatory master turned brass pitot. These are one of those things, master pitots and gun barrels are one of those things that once you start using them you're pretty much doomed to using them on every project for the rest of creation because they are completely brilliant. You just blow kit parts out of the water 100% of the time and the refuel probe end in particular is, is just beautiful and you won't even need to paint it. Um, these aren't the cheapest, but I don't know if they should be because, <laughs> because they are very nicely done and it's not necessarily the easiest thing in the world to do. Uh, what was this, nine-ish, seven, eight, nine pounds for this set? So that's that. I have from my comprehensive stash of bits and pieces, when I go to model shows, if I see ch sort of cheap resin bits and pieces, odds and sods kicking about, I tend to pick them up. Um, just in case if it's a subject that I know I have some interest in um, these would fall under that these are a pair of uh, Neomega or Neomega resin Mark 6 seats they're a little bit kind of bit, kind of old school to look at there's a little bit of kind of mould flash and wear and nonsense on them but they'll clean up I don't know for sure that I'll use these yet uh, it's certainly an option 
I'm really not a fan of photo etch belts, uh, especially on injection seats like this. The, the, this sort of belt layout is relatively complex and what they almost never seem to do is just be neatly lying flat on a seat. Um, but yeah, I'll look at reference pictures and I'll look at the kit seats and see what I think, but I may well use those. Surprisingly to me, it doesn't really seem to be a sort of full-on cockpit set or anything like that available for the kit yet. Um, don't know why that might be. I also have this Fox 2 Modelers Essentials, a mini guide. Um, this clearly, as you can see, Central Aircraft References, full modelers, but just with one L. And this is a bit of a treasure trove really because there are a lot of photographs in here of in-service aircraft rather than stuff that's sat in collections now which is not necessarily fully representative of an in-service aircraft as you can see there are lots of pictures here of, of, of them when they were in use properly but various colour schemes and time periods like this is a obviously quite an early one beautiful photograph as well um, and they go right through. They've got Gulf aircraft in here. They've got the experimental grey aircraft in here. Various special schemes. There's too much crap on my desk. There you go. A wintry one and a desert one. Special scheme there for uh, 208. But lots of really atmospheric, lovely, sort of full page, good quality photos like this one which clearly show some really nice little weathering features, leaks, boot marks, finger marks, smudges, exhaustive exhaust stains, weapon loads, you name it. Grey one, no creases in those tyres. <coughs> and so on, as I say, it covers pretty much most of the RAF at least. There's some golf stuff there. A load of general photos and then it's got an in detail section with some much more close up photographs of the various areas of the jet. As I say it's not exhaustive like some of the um, reference books that we can get but it's very decent indeed. And certainly better than nothing. I have supplemented this with a, a trundle around the internet, picked up a few images here and there. The cockpit photos here are very good actually. There's our seats. A brake, hook, bomb bay. Lovely stuff. This one, I, I got this from Hanant a while back. Uh, as you may recall, I was planning a, a 70 second build and this has taken ages to get around to, but I uh, picked this up a while back. I can't remember how much it was. I'm sure it's reassuringly expensive, but yeah, it's available from Hanant or directly from Double Up Your Books, probably. Handy little guide. Now I have made a start and I think um, just a quick sort of, I'll touch on the thought process a little bit. So when I enter a build, the vast majority of the time I will have, if not a, an actual mental image of what I'm trying to achieve with the build, I'll have some sort of framework in my mind of what I'm lo looking to go towards. So, you know, things like weapons loads and the state of weathering the color scheme all that kind of stuff will already be in my mind before i even start uh, this one as i say already it's 12 squadron wraparound camouflage this is the 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 idea is to represent an aircraft that's on the line ready to go so it's not being serviced it won't have loads of open panels or or anything like that it's as if it was parked on the flight line waiting for the crew to rock up and to go and punch holes in the sky 
pretty much like this. This being a photograph of the flight line at RAF Lossermouth. As you can see, there's a wide variety of colour schemes there and the air aircraft are in various different states. But having consulted with my friend whom this is being built for, we're going for open air brakes, closed bomb bay, open cockpit canopy. And the pins fitted will be the seat, the undercarriage and the weapons. But no engine blanks because it's sat there waiting to go. I will also endeavour, I'm not sure if anybody knows this by the way, I know that at least one person who watches my videos worked on 208 Squadron. If you can remember or help me out where exactly the earthing point is and the um, the port, the, the access panel for the ground power unit. You can see the earth lead in this photo actually down here. Um, so I want to have it earthed and have the um, cable at least from a power unit plugged in and there'll be chocks and things like that as you can see here. So that's the plan. That's where we're going to try and go with it. Um, and as tradition dictates, I've started with the centre section of, of the aircraft. Yeah, no. Uh, obviously the instructions say to start with the cockpit, but um, I actually like doing cockpits little. I don't enjoy it that much um, and I wanted to just get on with something other than the cockpit. And with this build you do have that option because you can build it in sort of chunks, uh, this being the centre section. So. The first thing I decided to do was sort out this area here, you can see where I've sanded, where the surface of the model had lumps from the moulding of these drilling points on the inside. So I tipped the black super glue into the holes because I figured that they'd be very very thin by the time I'd sanded that down. And when you do something like that it is important if you drop the super glue in across the top of all the holes and it will look like it's filled them up but if you then go and podge into each hole with a cocktail stick you'll see that what actually happens is that there's a bubble of air in the bottom of each hole and the glue just bridges across the top which wouldn't help me at all with acting as a safety for that so I puddled around with the um, cocktail stick to make sure the glue is actually in the holes which makes a horrible mess as you can see uh, and in the end I didn't actually break through, but I can see the glue. I don't know if you can see it on film or if the camera will even focus on it, but maybe you might be able to see the sort of faintest black dots shining through because the plastic is so, so thin there. So I do think it was worth doing. Um, I've already glued this forward bulkhead piece in and I've sprayed the front faces compress the faces. This is um, white aluminium from AK Extreme Metal. I very much like those paints. And the front portion of the intake has been built and I've filled and sanded the seams on the inside. As you can see hopefully. Just super glue and talc down the seam. You can see the seams weren't, they're were actually better on the outside in some ways than they were on the inside but they're quite easy to get at. I can fit my fingers right in so it's reasonably easy to sand. So they've both been filled, sanded, then Mr. Surfaced, then sanded again and then I've sprayed my aluminium mixture in there. I'm not 100% sure if that's the right colour for this time period but that's okay for now. Again if anyone knows better do let me know. So they just pop into here and we've got a nice seamless intake situation going on there. Um, I've also cleaned all the flash and mould seams from these apertures here but I was quite annoyed to note having spent a few minutes doing all of that when I offered these parts together the banana effect is alive and well. It seems to have settled down a little bit with the addition of the bulkheads actually, but it's, it isn't a big deal of course, glue is gonna bring this together, but the problem is that it does affect the way this part of the model sits. And when you hold this tight down, it, it moves that. So I'm planning to build 
all of this internal structure, stick it together at the front and at the back and leave the wings to do whatever they're going to do and then when this is all dry then bring those together. I've also made a start on finessing the knacker ducts. There are quite a lot of knacker vents all over this thing. Uh, some of them are moulded reasonably okay, like this one here. Some of them considerably less okay, like the ones on the top here. They're shallow, they're indistinct, they're really not very good. So I've decided to go around and do them all. Um, and the way I've gone about that, here's one I did earlier, is drill a couple of holes in the knacker duct recess and then carefully carve out with a pointed scalpel blade my normal number 11 number 3 combo carve out all of that material do it nice and neat so you're left with a perfect sort of triangular-ish hole then from the inside taper this rear edge significantly because this rear edge should be thin because that's where the air goes in and then using the hole as a template I've made a thin plastic card it's just a flat piece of plastic card that fits into this recess and it's angled in such a way that at the front edge it's flush with the model and at the back it just sits on the inside and the effect that you get when you look at it is that that's an actual vent and not just a moulded triangle. I would say all in all that took me maybe 15-20 minutes if that but that was the first one I did. I was testing the concept really uh, that's why I picked one on the underneath that's relatively out of the way so that if it failed I could just fudge it but um, it seems to have worked quite well. Uh, but in particular in the case of these smaller, less well moulded ducts, I think that that's a worthwhile upgrade. Now the rest of the internal structure for this is made up of several pieces. There's a sort of an aft bulkhead area uh, part, this exhaust tubes with the sort of integral bit of undercarriage bay structure. There's a middle bulkhead here, this is just sat in place at the moment but it sits quite tightly. And that all pops into the model something like this and it starts to build up into quite a quite reasonable sort of structure if I just pop this is the front or well, I suppose it's the rear but this is these are the turbines it does the kit instructions talk about various colors that you can paint those turbine faces in but if you look at the lengths of these ducts and imagine you've then got the actual exhaust parts as well you really you know I mean you can just about see down there at the minute but uh, that will not remain the case and then these panels slide in like so and when the whole lot's popped into the fuselage it creates a nice rigid structure but it also creates some reason pretty reasonable wheel bays actually and bear with me because it's only just popped into place it's all a bit loose but it's what you end up with it's not the most detailed thing in the world but it's not bad it's not bad could use a little finessing maybe and a, maybe a bit of wiring and what have you can be added there um, because it, but since the model is going to be on a base I probably won't go mental. I have had to do a lot of clean up on this part in particular here. Uh, the mould seams and scars and such in the plastic, I can get that so you can see it, there you go, are quite ugly and relatively visible so I've spent time on this side, I haven't done that one yet, but just with a sanding stick just cleaning everything up, smoothing it all off both sides of this getting it flat and to be honest the warpage and the mould seams is just it's going to be a theme I'm afraid to say we're going with the closed bombay so this is the bombay panel 
this actually fits really really nicely which is good that's how it goes in like so there is a gap at the front I've trimmed this down deliberately to induce that gap because it's very obvious on photographs that there's a, a decent gap because this whole assembly rotated round and round it wasn't you know it didn't open and close the whole lot span around so that gap was to enable space for it to move well that's nice So tail section, just obviously it's just two halves, there's a, a bulkhead plate for the back and an infill plate underneath which has the details for the arrestor hook recess. This does fit quite nicely as you can see that isn't even glued and it's pretty reasonable and the aircraft does have panel lines around this so you can kind of get away with a lot of that. Don't forget to drill out the holes, the aerials there. And then up here at the back, top edge of the fin, can you see that warping and short shot area there? Mm. That's all going to have to be built up with super glue and CA, smoothed out, sanded back. And there's your the area where the um, air brakes will go into. This is the nose pieces just taped together for the moment. I've put the tub together, popped it in, nose wheel bay's in there. Absolutely no detail at all in the nose wheel bay. The fit of this from side to side is actually very good. But the fit of <laughs> the back part of the cockpit tub This piece is separate and if you look at the back you can clearly see that that has been sanded and it had to be sanded because there were numerous weird little scars that stuck out which would have stopped it from fitting in there and the flash and the mould seams and the just general mould nonsense around these edges and these tabs was quite it, it was quite heavy it took quite a long time of trimming and mucking about to get it nice and it needs to be because it fits into here this this tab sits into that sort of hook part there uh, the instructions note click and it, it does uh, but you can see on this one in particular you can see the stress mark on that from where it was so tight and I've actually trimmed it down further since to get that to sit in there a little more easily be careful with that you need to take all this load of um, sort of I don't know mold mold scars and things this was all too thick and misshapen and just just nasty honestly it took, took quite a lot of cleaning up there are clearly some fairly advanced ejector pin marks in here as well I don't think that these are visible when it's done but I'm not sure I need to check and they may need to be dealt with And lastly for now I did point this out on the inbox, um, <laughs> I've trimmed them off and had a look at it. So tail plane, first and foremost look how straight it isn't, it's walked in all kinds of directions and then each one of these ejector pin scars is proud same is true of this other one first of all look how straight it isn't it's like a flipping s shape and then great big ejection ejector marks scars these are meant to fit together flushly these circles interlock so without any extra cleaning process this is what you have it's absolutely terrible Yes, it's only a few minutes work to clean all these up, but 
Well, I'm going to say it. I think less experienced modellers might not realise this needs to be done and they might try and stick it together and it'll just be a nasty, nasty mess and they'll wonder what they did wrong. The warpage is is an issue because neither of these panels are straight. So it's going to be a guessing game of trying to get this glue together and get it to end up being straight. Um, so that's warpage on the tail pieces, the main fuse large pieces, at least one of the main wing parts, the tail planes, all have significant warps in them uh, that, that could could cause issues along the way in the build. Now I did I did actually get a bit grumpy about all this while I was working on it and I considered firing off a message to one of the guys at Airfix and saying something along the lines of you know look chaps this is a bit pants please would you send me some replacement parts or sprues and the thing is I know that they would um, but I decided not to I've decided to go ahead and build it and deal with it and show that during this this build process these videos and um, because it's what most people are going to have to do um, I'm not having a go at the guys at Airfix um, I'm not a fanboy or an apologist not not in any way but I do know several of them personally I've met several of them chatted with them get on with them I like them they're good guys and I genuinely believe that there are very 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 few people in this world that go to work and deliberately do a bad job um, I think the issue with these kits isn't isn't the design of the kits I think the design work is is very very good I think the issue is the quality of the production or rather the lack of it uh, and the lack of a seemingly an effective quality control process um, basically they're designing a, a, a great product and they're being badly let down by their production processes I realize of course that um, prices are a thing and prices need to be kept so somewhere south of reasonable or at least level with it but the issue is this kit at full retail price is £72. It's not an insignificant amount of plastic for £72, but bear in mind that the Tamiya F35B can be had for £90. The Tamiya F35A can be had for £80. Odd. It's not much more money, and those things don't have any of these issues and won't cause you any problems when you put them together. This is more expensive, even at the sort of discounted rates that you will be able to pick it up at, than the Atari F35B. And as much as that wasn't a great kit to work on, it wasn't like this. So I feel at the minute that this this sort of these kind of quality issues are going to be a problem for FX if they, if they don't maybe take a minute to see what they can do to, to get on top of them because there's an awful lot of people out there who are not going to be happy with paying over £70 for a product like this and having to do things like this to get it to fit together. You can talk about assembling versus modelling and all that good stuff that people like to to bandy around in these situations but at the end of the day a quality the price you're paying for these products reflects at least an ambition for a certain level of quality and I think that the product you receive ought to be in that ballpark and if it isn't then the consumer ultimately will speak with the consumers will speak with their feet and they'll go and buy products from other companies instead i was going to say that's just my two cents but that was more like three dollars worth of, of chat there wasn't it
All right, I cleaned these up. Um, neither of my scalpel blades are very sharp. I need to change them. But um, I have just scalpeled these nubs off. And now the parts do at least fit together. They are still warped. I'm still going to have to figure that out. Um, I think maybe I'll find something something flat and, and, and clamp the whole thing down maybe uh, while the glue goes off but they do at least fit together now so we'll see we'll see how these quality of issues affect the build if at all they may not as we go along but uh, certainly my initial impressions of fit and finish are less than favorable i'm afraid to say i'll just uh, i'll just introduce the tail section to the rest of the fuselage for further amusement not horrendous but you know it's quite an adventurous breakdown and it just <laughs> it's just not quite there but we'll figure it out we'll figure it out and um, obviously things like this tend to work better when your parts are actually glued together solidly rather than just held together with your hands but then sometimes gluing it together makes it worse I don't know we'll see so there we go that's just a quick initial look at this uh, Buccaneer build. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I know I've done a lot of moaning in this video. Um, but I do think that, that the build, as, we, as, as it gets into its stride and things start to go together, I'm hopeful uh, that it will actually be a lot of fun. And I do think the finished model is going to look rather lovely. So let's not be too much doomy and gloomy. But it, ultimately, those are things that need to be said, I feel. Um, and I, I, I do think I will personally get in touch with the girls at the Airfix and, and, and point this out, but um, we'll build it and see how it goes. Anyway, I'll leave it there for this one, and I'll see you again, hopefully, in part two, coming soon to a YouTube near you. And um, with all of that said, it only remains for me to say, look after yourselves, look after each other. Jennifer's out.